Hey all, welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking and Travel Podcast. I am Darren, of course, and today we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics, and that is cruising. I'll be right back, and we're going to delve into the subject of cruising. Hey all, welcome to Fire and Water Travel Services. We specialize in affordable luxury and culinary adventures with all types of travel, including cruises, all-inclusives, and any type of travel that you're looking for. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and make sure you like and subscribe and share this channel. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to Fire and Water Cooking and Travel Podcast. It is me, Darren, of course, like in the introduction. Um, today, we are going to be discussing cruising, um, the evolution of cruising, and, and not just that, but just how um, popular cruising has become over the years. Um, I don't know about you, but I, I started really looking at cruising as a vacation option back in the 80s um that's kind of when i started hitting the, the age where i could start planning my vacations on my own <laughs> so um but one of the things i did uh remember that got stuck in my head is the uh carnival cruise tv ads with kathy lee gifford singing and i'm actually gonna play one of them here Hopefully you guys can hear it. I'm probably going to have to have the microphone down by the speaker real quick. So hold on one second. I'm going to have to switch. The place I like best of all, and I'm sure you will too, is right on board my ship. The Super Nice Celebration. If they can see it now, out on a bunch of trees. Eating what you do and what you see. Well, that's enough of that, guys. I just wanted to play that for you because I think it uh, uh, that's that's stuck in my head, and that's what really I um, got me interested in cruising because back then, you know, hey. It was something totally new to me and to a lot of people uh, to be able to go out on the water and experience some uh, pretty cool, uh, some pretty cool things. Um, the Caribbean islands, of course, getting the uh, the food and and all that kind of stuff. Uh, back then, it was just something you dreamed about. <laughs> Pretty much. You didn't really um, imagine you could do it. And Carnival was one of the first ones that really pushed it um, and did a lot of advertising and tried to bring the prices down to where it was affordable for everybody. So I kind of, you know, for me anyway, I know Royal Caribbean was out there and so was uh, Norwegian. But for some reason, Carnival stuck in my head because of that jingle and Kathy Lee and all that just uh, really uh, got me thinking about cruising. So when f cruising first came out um, big time like that, I, I do remember um, people going, hey, you know, when you get on a cruise ship, you can eat whatever you want. You can do this. You can do that. You go to the, all these, you know, ports that, you know, never been to before. And it was all, you know, included in the price. So it was really um, something to look forward to. And I really didn't do my first cruise until. Um, my second marriage when me and my wife, uh, you know, originally got married, we did a, a cruise, just me and her, just a, a quick four day, actually a three day or four day from Tampa to Cozumel on one of the older, uh, carnival ships. And we had a blast. It was a little rough weather because we went in the summertime, but, um, then we, a couple of, about a couple of years later, we took our son who was, uh, like one or two at the time on a Royal Caribbean for a three day to see if he liked it Had a blast. And we'd been cruising ever since we've done a lot of carnival cruises. We've done some princess cruises. We've done a couple other cruises, uh, MSC as well. We did an NCL. We did some theme cruises, uh, especially the, the kiss cruise. So over the years, just from us cruising the cruise line, have changed a lot and there's a lot more um options a lot more selection that you can look at and 
from anything from your budget cruise lines to your super luxury cruise lines to smaller cruise lines that target different demographics. So we're going to kind of talk about a little bit of that, but the whole concept of cruising was kind of a one shop package for your everything included for food, your travel to your destinations, you get to hit different ports and, you know, uh, all different activities, you know, your trivias, your karaoke's, your uh, to now they've got roller coasters, ice skating rinks, you know, uh, bumper cars, race cars, all kinds of stuff. It's it's kind of evolved into, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that um, as well. But when it originally came out, you know, um, I remember the original Carnival ships. They had a buffet and a main dining room, and that's pretty much it as far as food went. Um, they they had they would open the buffet up again at midnight and they would have a special midnight buffet and they would do like ice carvings and stuff like that they used to have you could hit golf balls off the back of the ship they used to have skeet shooting they used to have some things that they don't have anymore but then again back then they didn't have some of the stuff that they have now um now it's really exploded and they all try to keep up with each other as far as what they're offering uh, their passengers and and what they can come up with new and bigger ships. Um, but it's still about value and getting the customers to cruise and, and choose their cruise line. But they've also figured out that they can add some more specialty items to their lineup and people will pay for them, and, but they don't have to. So, um, of course, with the specialty dining restaurants, you'll see a lot of that now. You'll see a lot of um, different activities that, um, you know, they may charge you for the roller coaster, but, you know, they got water slides and other things that are included. And besides your excursions that you do on the different ports, um, nowadays they have the new private islands and they're expanding their private island offerings as far as what they have on them to make that more of a destination as well and have some things on there that they charge extra for that uh, makes you want to keep coming back. Uh, Royal Caribbean did that with their Coco K, where they have several different uh, zones that some of them are you know, cost you more money to go to. They have different options like with, with the, you know, the different um, water play areas and all that. They may cost you a little bit more. They have some upgraded food offerings on the private islands that it may cost you a little more. Uh, Carnival's following suit with their new celebration key coming up um, next year. Um, all of these companies have come out with their own little private islands, which was cool, but they really, what they originally did with the private islands was, it was just an extension of the cruise ship where you could, they would just take you, you'd go to the beach for the day. There were some, maybe some a little excursions you could buy to upgrade, but usually your food was included and your drink package carried over to the private island. So there wasn't a whole lot of upcharging on the private islands originally. But now they're turning that into a full-blown, we're offering all these extra things you can do, options, um, more upscale uh, offerings that you can pay more money for. And that that seems to be what's the next thing besides the bigger ships that they're going on. But one of the things that always intrigued me was the food. And some of these cruise lines have really... Um, focused on food and let's just go um let's just say i'm going to pick carnival because i have the most experience with carnival as far as that goes because they have um just to show you on their newer ships especially you know they've hooked up with emerald Lagasse. he's now their chief culinary officer they call him and he gets in, involved in even the dent the the food that they offer in the main dining room but they also on their newer ships they have what's called um emerald's bistro which is separate little eatery that has um you know more of a new orleans uh, flavor that is is extra but 
it has some pretty good food. I've had a lot of the the food at Emerald's Bistros, and they don't charge you a whole lot for those. They charge you maybe five dollars here, ten dollars here, for whatever shrimp and grits or whatever, maybe like uh, eight dollars or your beignets are like four dollars, something like that. But it's really good stuff, and it doesn't really cost you a lot more. But you don't have to get it if you don't want to. But what I'm getting at is they partnered with people like Emerald Lagasse, uh, Guy Fieri, uh Shaq, uh, Shaquille O'Neal for Big Chicken, and they really get some high marks for their food. I love the uh, the the chef's table that the uh, carnival does. I've done that several times, and that is actually a uh, it's like going to a high end restaurant and doing a you know an eight course meal. Uh, and it all being all highly uh chefly prepared and all that they take you on a uh tour of the kitchen and all that just going to show you here on the chef's table but everything is um very very fancy and it takes about a three hours and it includes all your wine and everything um usually costs about a hundred bucks to do it to do something like this on land would cost you probably three or four hundred dollars a person. It's just phenomenal what they offer and and what the cost is. So if you like something like that, where it's more of a dining experience, where you're, uh, you know, experiencing multiple uh, entrees and appetizers, uh, check out the chef's table on on Carnival. I think they have it on other cruise lines as well, but. Just the, their focus on food is is really uh, one of the things that I love about cruising. Guy's Burgers is famous for, uh, you know, the smash burgers. Uh, you know, the big chicken on the newer XL class ships is awesome. If you've never had um, the big chicken sandwiches and stuff like that from Shacks, it's, it's pretty good. And they're expanding a lot of their... Um, uh, Especially restaurants as well. They've hooked up with a lot of the top chefs, Rudy Seagrill. They've hooked up with uh, others as well. Um, <clears throat> so it's it's just to me the food is is really well worth it. And one of the reasons why I enjoy cruising because you can experience so many different food options. Now Carnival, some of the bigger ships now they also have what's called Carnival Kitchen where they do cooking classes. My daughter and I did a sushi making class, but they have five or six different types of um, uh, cooking classes that you can sign up for. Of course, they cost extra, but you don't have to do them. Like I said, it's something that, you know, but when they do charge you, they don't charge you a whole lot. It costs you 20 bucks or something for a cooking class, which is really not, not a lot at all. So uh, I'm going to stop sharing that for a minute. But yeah, I mean, that's, one of the things I really love about cruising is the different options in food, whether it's especially dining or just what's included. I know that Royal Caribbean is the same way. They have many different specialty restaurants, different dining options, and some of those are included in the price and some of those are upsells. But it, it really, to me, like I said, it goes back to the value of what you get for your vacation. You have those options. You have you can experience you know multiple different um, styles of cooking and food and 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 not have to leave the ship. So it's really good. And a lot of those, like I said, um, the mega ships or the mega mass market uh, companies like uh, Royal Caribbean, Carnival, NCL, you know, they try to cram as much on those ships as possible. And one of them, I'm going to share my screen again because it's another thing I want to touch on. And, you know, Carnival has their new bigger ships as well. But um, Royal, to me, uh, is really every ship they come out with now has to be bigger and better than the last one. And I did a tour of the Icon of the Seas last month. And just a day, we went around and, and looked at everything we could on the Icon of the Seas. And if you see it here... It is the world's largest cruise ship, and there are some pretty cool things that it has on there. Make sure you take a look at my video that I did on the Icon uh, Fire and Water Travel YouTube channel and Facebook 
because there is so much on there. We were on there for three hours and running the whole time. And we barely saw, we probably saw about two thirds of it. There was probably a third of it. We did, did not get to see, and we didn't get to see any of the state rooms, but the companies are all trying to offer more and more and bigger and better and cram as much on these ships as possible besides cramming more people on them. And if you look, compare the older ships now with what the newer ships are offering. There's a lot more balconies on the ships nowadays than there was when the original cruise ships came out. Um, there was a lot more, you know, uh, ocean views and interior rooms, but now you have probably at least half or if not two thirds of the cabins on the newer cruise ships are balcony cabins, either exterior looking out of the ocean balcony cabins or like with some of the newer um royal caribbean ships they have internal balcony cabins that look into the neighborhoods that are on those ships as well but um kind of crazy uh what's going on with the newer ships and then making them just bigger and bigger and offering more and more stuff but and what they're trying to do, and of course, you know, with like with the icon of the seas, it does cost more than some of their older ships because they are adding a lot more stuff to it. But um, it 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 does increase the price. But just like anything, prices go up on stuff. But the more you do, the more you get, the more you're going to pay. Um, and that's another thing I want to say: the newer age of add-ons. It used to be when you were on a cruise back in the '80s or so. Most of your stuff was included. Your food was included, you know, pretty much all your food because they didn't have specialty dining or anything. You might have to pay for your drinks and they didn't have drink packages back then. You would just pay for your drinks normally. Um, and now they've added on drink packages and they've made it to where, you know, so a lot of your cruise companies where if you have two people, you know, two adults in the room, both of you have to get the drink package. One of you can't get it not just one of you because uh, I never get a drink package because my wife doesn't drink and then I don't drink enough to uh, make it worth my while anyway. I might have a couple beers or a couple drinks here and there, a couple glasses of wine, but never enough to uh, um, be able to spend the money on a drink package. And, uh, but besides that now, like I said, with the specialty restaurants add-ons with the, activity add-ons that they have on the ships now where if you want to do the roller coaster you have to pay like this if you want to do the arcade it's this besides just the casino which can always suck money out of you there is a lot more add-ons and with the private islands where they're doing all the different add-ons as well the cruise companies are really learning how to make a lot of money off of people <laughs> and people are just signing up and smiling and handing over their uh, their money to them as well but like I said, the value is what they're building into it. You know, you can go here on this ship, get all this stuff, have access to all these different add-ons if you want to do them, and then have a great time and then go home without having to having to go to all these different other places. But hey, all, it's Darren. I want to make sure you check out Fire and Water Cooking Edible Creations Seasonings and Sauces. The uh, black garlic we use is the highest quality domestic black garlic you can find from the black garlic and herb compound butter to the blueberry and black garlic to our all-purpose black garlic and our black garlic and coffee seasoning all are amazing made with the highest quality ingredients you can find them on amazon walmart.com and on fireandwatercooking.com check them out guys another thing i want to talk about is the themed cruises they're, do they're doing more and more themed cruises and Usually they'll take the older and smaller ships and do those. I actually did the the Kiss Cruise a few years back um, and took the family. We had a great time. And they're doing more and more of those where they uh, a company will charter out one of the older ships. And they'll have, you know, different kinds of bands. Let's just say they do a jazz cruise or they'll do like the Kiss Cruise or they'll do, um, you know, any any kind of different um, uh tv show or something that's really popular like you know maybe a sopranos cruise all kinds of theme cruises out there guys so um it's really surprises me from when it, when i first started looking and seeing cruises back in the 80s to what they are now um 
and as far as that, there's so many different cruise companies now um, that offer and cater to different uh, demographics as well. Um, let me share my screen again because I want to show you uh, Virgin Voyages because they are um, owned by Richard Branson, so the same guy that owns uh, Virgin Records and Virgin Airlines, and he came out with his own cruise company a couple of years back. And his is a little different because it's for adults only. So 18 and up, there's no kids on here. It's focused on what uh, adults like to do. So there's no water slides or anything like that on here. Nothing kid focused. It's pretty much, you know, they have some nightclubs. They have a couple pools. They have, you know, activities for more adult lines, entertainment, and they concentrated on going to different ports and their ships are all the same. They all look the same. They're all the same size. It's another one of these ships that has probably 70 or 75% balconies on it. So they have a lot more balconies. They have a lot of suites. They have some interiors and ocean views, but just not a lot. They focus on balconies. They have hammocks on the uh, decks and it's focused on adults and it's really very popular they're actually expanding as well they're doing a lot more um different ports of call now uh but another thing that they do they're kind of going in the opposite way of some of the other cruise lines where they're going back to including a lot of stuff in your cruise fare so they include wi-fi they include your tips and gratuities all your dining, they have up to 20, 20 plus eateries and six of those are like specialty restaurants where you need reservations, but they're all included and that's high end food. We're getting ready to go on one of these cruises in July. So uh, definitely you'll be doing a video on that. You can watch on um, the uh, YouTube channel and Facebook as well, but all your entertainment, actually even your soda and water are included. Uh, and fitness classes, all that stuff is included in your fare. So they do charge for uh, drinks. They have a, a kind of different way they do their drink package. It's more of you're pre-purchasing a dollar amount, and they give you a kind of a discount. So they call it bar tab, where you pay, let's just say for your cruise, you're, you buy, you prepay for $200 worth of your drinks, and they'll give you an extra 25 or 50 bucks. I can't remember which it is. So you're actually you, you get a little bit of a discount by pre-purchasing your 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 uh, bar drinks, and then you don't have to worry about both of you getting it in the room. And you can if it's just one of you drinks, one of you can get it, and it's just a certain dollar amount. So I kind of like it that way because for people like me who has a spouse that doesn't drink, and I don't drink a whole lot, I don't have to get pay. $80 a day for a drink package and not be able to get my money's worth out of it. It's um, I can just take a hundred bucks, put that towards my um, drinks on the ship and I get like a 10 or $20 discount um, on that, which is cool. And, you know, that's something I'd, I'd rather do than spending a whole lot of money on a drink package and not being able to use it or get my money's worth out of it. I know why they do it on the other cruise lines, but this makes it so much easier. So like again, I said, this, you know, this cruise line focuses on a different demographic, you know, adults only um, kind of more of a luxury line where you know, all your stuff's included and they're not really looking as they're not really known as a budget, um, cruise line at all so pretty cool and you got several different companies that are set up that way uh you got viking cruises that targets adults only but more of an older crowd so more of your retirees that are looking to do longer trips and all that and um and you have river cruises now as well so you got a lot of companies that are doing river cruises in europe and in other parts of the world where um, they're smaller ships, more intimate. Uh, they do spend a lot more time in the uh, different ports, and you have access to whole, all different kinds of ports as well. Uh, so the, the amount of different cruising options out there between ocean cruising and river cruising is just 
you know, phenomenal to me. It's just amazing to what the choices are. It's one of the reasons why having a travel agent really can help you steer into what you're really looking for. Even with ocean cruising, like I said, you have different cruise lines that have uh, different options and they target different demographics like Viking and Virgin uh, that target more adults only. Then you have your higher end luxury cruise lines like Regent Seven Seas that may cost a little more, but they have smaller ships, more luxury, more included stuff, um, more uh, aimed more towards people that are looking for the finer things in life that'll spend a little bit more money for it. Uh, and then they have you have lines like Oceania that they focus really focus on the culinary part. They're known for the, having the best cuisine on the sh- on the seas. Um, it may not be as uh, luxurious as some of the others, but they're kind of more of the higher end premium. Then, of course, you got your Holland Americas and your Princess that kind of target a mix, but more towards people that are doing bucket list trips like. Alaska or uh, something like that. Um, another another uh, cruise segment that's really grown over the last couple of years is um, expedition cruising, which that is going to places that are not really, that are off the beaten path, that really you need to uh, have some kind of physicality to go to, like, uh, Antarctica or Greenland or um, the fjords in, in Norway and some of the higher Arctic uh, places up there or going to Alaska and not just looking at it from the ship but actually landing and going into some of these uh, uh, you know pretty rough places um, going to the Galapagos and, and Fiji and all that there's a whole lot of um, expansion going on and those types of cruises and those cost costs a pretty penny. They're not, they're not cheap, but they're totally different than going on a carnival cruise to the, uh, to the uh, Caribbean for sure. Um, they are, you know, smaller boats. They're more fortified boats because they're going through a lot rougher seas. They have things on them like Zodiacs that will take you so you can land on Antarctica and see the penguins and all that. And there's just so many different options nowadays. Um, and it, you could pretty much imagine anything you want to do. There's a cruise line or a cruise that will offer that for you nowadays. So anywhere you want to go, there's going to be a cruise or a cruise line that's going to offer something for you to do. Um, and like I said, it's grown over the, the last few years and it's going to continue to grow. So one of the things that I want to talk about is the impact on cruising for the whole entire travel industry, because back in years ago, travel was pretty much, you know, car rentals, airplanes, and tours. Um, every once in a while, there was, you know, the cruise cruise company started coming aboard. But now cruising is probably a good 30 or 40 percent of the travel industry because there are so many different uh kinds of cruises uh besides like i said there's the you know if you throw the uh river cruises and all that into it it's just amazing how much is offered out there anymore so very highly suggest you guys use a travel agent just to be able to pick and choose and find what's what's what you're looking for in a cruise you know Maybe you don't want to, you've always heard that, you know, Carnival, you know, there's too many crazy people on there, too many drunks, too many people jumping off the ships. Well, that might not be the cruise line for you. You might want to look at something like uh, Oceania, which is a smaller ship, less people, or the or the Virgin or the Viking cruises where it's a little bit more laid back, a little bit um, less fancy than a Regent Seven Seas. So having a travel agent who can guide you through and find the perfect uh, cruise line for you is really uh, what you should do. Um, but also the cruises have grown, grown so much that a lot of these ports of call are starting to 
kick back a little bit. I mean, there's some ports like in Alaska and over in Europe that are really starting to limit the amount of ships that can come into port on certain days, or some of them have actually cut off some of the bigger ships that they, they telling them that they just can't come in anymore because there's too many people on them, too many people showing up all at the same time. So I expect that to continue to be an issue. And that's another reason why I think some of these uh, companies are concentrating more on their own private islands because uh, they actually have a place that they, their ship can go and entertain their people while they keep a lot of that money to themselves and just have another port option. So they don't have to worry about too many uh, ports that are saying, hey, we got to limit how many cruise ships can be in our port every day because we're just getting overrun. But uh, still, that's another one, guys, you got to really think about. Do you want to go on a cruise ship with 7,000 other people or do you want to be on one that maybe only has, you know, 2,000 people on it? Or one that only has like 900 on it because there are options out there for all of that um cruising is not just the mega ships and what they offer anymore there's so many different options that it really it really does need uh somebody to help you guide guide you to what you're looking for but other than that guys i think that's all i really wanted to talk about today um just because Cruising is very popular. It's getting more popular. There's more being added on all these different cruise companies. There's more companies coming out offering different um, types of cruising. Like I said, with the expedition cruises, the river cruises, it's all good. It's all different. And you got so many options and so many different ways to enjoy yourself. It's crazy. So, but thanks for uh, listening, guys. I'm going to have some people on coming up um, in the next few episodes that are going to talk about travel as well as food. So um, I wanted to get an episode out here to talk about this on my own before we start delving in. I'll have, I think I have the, uh, one of the ladies from Virgin Voyages will be coming on soon to kind of tell you what they offer, what's different that they offer than some of the other mass market cruises. To, and I'll, I'll be looking to do that with other travel companies down the road, not just cruising, but some all inclusives. We'll do some travel package companies as well. Um, just to give you ideas on what is out there as far as travel and travel and food. So a lot of there, there's a lot of, um, food involved in travel. I mean, people love to try different foods and travel is a big part of, you know, your food's a big part of travel. And I'm going to try to focus on a lot of that with all these other guests that I'm going to be having on. So thanks for listening. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, check out fire and water travel on YouTube. Make sure you fire follow fire and water travel on Facebook and Instagram, and also follow fire and water cooking as well, because um, we're going to be doing some giveaways and some things like that to kind of let everybody know so they can start following us on all our different channels and, uh, uh, giving you guys some incentive to uh, keep following along. So I got a whole bunch of products. I think I'm going to start giving away and some discounts and things like that for travel, but look forward to it guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening and make sure you like subscribe and share and all that. And I'll see you on the next fire and water cooking and travel podcast. Thanks guys. <music>